How's it going everybody? My name's Dave Whipple and you're watching Bush Radical. If your life's anything like mine, it's full of flat tires. Tires that need to be reseated, tires that have leaks, tires with nails, tires that need to come off and go back on. Today what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the Harbor Freight portable tire changer. And what this is, is it's a manual tire changer. You bolt down to your floor and you can take a tire off the rim, you can put it back on the rim, you can break the bead, it's got a bead breaker, and if you're like me, it should solve a ton of problems that you have in your life. Because I can't stand going into town and wasting a couple hours just to get one tire fixed. If I could do it at home, I'd be so much happier. Dude, we're gonna take this machine, bolt it all together, bolt it down to the floor, and we're gonna change a tire for the very first time, a real tire, from my daughter's van that happens to have a flat tire, which is why I bought the machine in the first place. We're gonna see if it's worth the money they're asking, which is very little, if it's easy to use, if it's worth having, if it's good construction, I'm gonna give you guys a good solid review on it. Stay tuned. This is what comes in the box. Obviously it's that little stand. It's the tire changing tool itself. You also get the nuts and bolts, and of course the real important part of it, the bar that you're gonna use to do most of the work. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove this pin and take out this shaft that holds the breaker assembly on. Get that out of the way while we work. Other than following the picture, about the only thing you wanna make sure, you wanna make sure that the long part of this arm goes on the side that the breaker arm goes on. That's about it. Everything else is kinda of self-explanatory. It only took a couple minutes to bolt the base together, and I was ready to go. And just like that, the tire changer is assembled. Now what I need to do is I need to pick the spot that I want to mount it to the floor. This looks good. I'm just going to take a construction pencil, and I'm going to cut enough off each side that it'll drop down through those holes, like so. I'm going to make sure I'm straight up and down, get myself a mark. Once all your spots are marked, give them an extra line, because honestly, they just look like rocks in this old concrete. Just for good measure, Oh boy, good grief. Ah, give it a minute for that to settle down. Oh my goodness. You'd think the vacuum would get the dust out of that hole, but you'd be wrong. Now this is the mounting hardware we're gonna use. These are drop-in anchors made by the Redhead Company. Now the idea with these anchors is you hammer drill a hole down into the concrete, you tap the anchor down, and then you use the setting tool to expand the bottom of the anchor. So it's flush with the concrete, but it's got a threaded insert that takes a bolt. This is a wonderful invention. Put the breaker arm back on. Now we're ready to get ourselves a flat tire and throw it on here and see how it works. I have no idea how user friendly it is. I don't know that it's gonna work the way it's supposed to. We're gonna find out together. Now this particular tire is actually not bad. The problem is it had this valve stem failure. This Chrysler Town & Country came with a two part valve stem. The stem from the inside and then a locking nut collar on the outside. If you look over there, you can see the hole where the valve stem actually fell inside the tire. I could use a little bit more space to make that corner. All right. Let's see if we can get her off the bead.
Well, it definitely feels like it's got plenty of leverage. Still not wanting to get it done, though. Tire a little farther out. Maybe that helps. Okay. Yeah, we're winning now. So the first side of the tire broke down pretty easy. Took a couple of tries, had moved a couple times. The other side is taking its sweet time coming off. So I'm going to do what I should have done in the first place and uh, douse it down with some soapy water. Let's throw the tire up top, see how it comes off. All right, make sure this pin goes through one of your lug nut holes. Might as well hit this guy with some soapy water right off the get-go. Alright, let's see how this works. Now that was a walk in the park. Now that the tire is loose on one side, we need to get down here and catch that other lip. Get that other part of the tire going. Put the bar up against the post, put it up against your hip. Just walk around it. Wow. No problem. <laughs> Here's the problem. Yesterday, my daughter called me from uh, a gas station, and uh, this valve stem, believe it or not, this is a valve stem, this valve stem has a collar on it, and it's a threaded collar, holds the whole thing together, and that collar had corroded and fallen off. When she put the air chuck on it, it went and it pushed it into the tire. So that valve stem pushed into the tire. Of course, all the air came out of it. What we're gonna do today, I'm gonna put a valve stem in there that makes sense. A good old fashioned rubber valve stem. And this goofy tire pressure sensor thing from, from the 25th century, I don't want anything to do with that junk. So this is how we're gonna fix that tire with a good old 20th century rubber valve stem. No rocket science here. We'll just put this sucker in place of where this other spaceship tire sensor pressure thing was and then we will be good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up the bead area of the tire and of course the bead area of the wheel. We'll put this thing back together and see how easy that process is. Alright, second verse, same as the first I think. I don't really know how this goes. I'm just gonna have to wing it. Well, there's another way to do this. I don't know what it is. Does that go back
Well, well, getting it off was super easy. Putting it back on, honestly, I, I don't really know what I'm doing. So while the tire is back on, I, I don't know that I did it exactly the way I'm supposed to. I just kind of levered it back on with the bar. I'm probably using the wrong part of the tool. There's a hook on uh, this end that kind of gets underneath the tire and when you lever it, it seems to be putting it back on, but it's very hard to keep that upright. It wants to twist. So I don't know if I'm doing that right. But the important part is the tire's back on. I wanna make sure I don't have any paint chips from this tool here caught underneath the edge of this rim. And we'll see if we can get it back up on the bead. Right now there's no Schrader valve inside this valve stem. And I don't have an air chuck tip that will put a ton of air in here really fast like you need to do to get it on the bead. I'm just gonna try to use an air gun nozzle to get a lot of air in there at once. Let's see how that works. Oh ho! Well that worked like a charm. Came right up on the bead, popped right into place. All I gotta do is stuff a little Schrader valve in this valve stem, pump it up the tire pressure and throw it back on the van. I think we're good to go. There's my Schrader valve. Here's my homemade Schrader valve tool made out of a nail. Now that the tire's aired up and Schrader valve's in it, I'm gonna spray that bead down with some more soapy water. Just to check for leaks. Everything's looking good. No leaks on the one side, no leaks on the other side. I think it's good to go. The best part about having it set up this way is I can pull these bolts and move this machine back into a corner of the garage where it's totally out of the way. It doesn't even take up any space and it doesn't have to stay mounted right in the middle of the garage where you would put it to work on it. So there you have it. That was my very first time using this Harbor Freight manual tire changer. The fact that you can buy this machine for under $35, set it up at home and take care of your own tire issues, that's absolutely amazing. This is a technology that's old. This is something we've lost as a, as a country. The manual stuff that we relied on 70 years ago. It wasn't difficult to change this tire. It would have been a lot easier with a real pneumatic tire changing machine. Those are thousands and thousands of dollars and the only people that really buy those are tire shops who are doing tires day in and day out. And we get this mental picture of that's how you need to do it. That's the equipment that you need to get that job done. When in fact a tool like this, that's less than $40 can do the job just fine. I've got four rigs in Alaska. I've got four rigs here in Michigan. There's always a bad tire, always. There's also always a bald tire. There's, a, there's just, I'm up to my eyeballs in tires. I don't think I ever want to be in a situation from here on out where I don't have one of these machines. Even the first time using this, not knowing anything about changing tires, it was very easy to use this tool. I would say you have to bolt it down. There's no way around bolting it down. I would always say use soapy water when you're breaking down the bead. That was the thing that really made breaking the bead on the second side of the tire possible, because it didn't want to come off. But as soon as it had some soapy water around there, it popped right down off the bead. I would have to say that the tool itself it feels very solid. Once you bolt it down, it doesn't have any wiggle to it at all. It doesn't feel like it's gonna go anywhere. This bar, it, it didn't have any, any give to it at all. It's definitely not gonna give you any problems. The only negative I think I could say in regards to this tire changer is the bar that you use to break the bead. It doesn't quite have enough clearance 
to get past that center post like it should. You could feel it binding and then you push past it. And so I've already knocked paint off that center post. Not that that makes any difference. I could care less. So in regards to the Harbor Freight portable tire changer, I would have to give it a gigantic thumbs up. It does something I've always wanted to be able to do at home. It works very easy. You don't have to know much of anything. You'll figure it out. I figured it out. It gives you that ability to do something that you, you would otherwise have to pay somebody else to do. And for me, that's everything. The more of that I can have in my life, I, you know, I, to get that one tire fixed, I would have had to spend an hour and a half going to town and waiting to get the tire fixed and driving back and putting it back on the van myself. Here I spent uh, about an hour and a half, but I actually took a tool, I, I did all the installation, I put the thing all together, and I changed the tire in that hour and a half. And the next time I need to change the tire, it's going to be 25 minutes, and the time after that, probably 20 and ultimately I'll probably get it down to where I can do it in 15 minutes or so. Gigantic thumbs up on this tire changer. Less than 40 bucks. Even with the bolts I had to buy to mount it down and the concrete inserts, it's basically ready to go. It's ready to do what it's supposed to be able to do and I've spent less than $40 on it. The next time I change a tire, this thing will have paid for itself and it's built solid enough that I can tell right now I'm not gonna break it. It's a good machine and it's dirt cheap. So if you have a homestead, you've got a remote property, you have ATVs and farm equipment and trucks and cars, and you like to have the, the ability to do this at home, I couldn't recommend this more. I've only had it for a day. It's halfway paid for itself, and I think it works fantastic. It's easy to use. I couldn't be happier. So the Harbor Freight Manual Tire Changer, I'm gonna give it a huge thumbs up. You get a lot of machine for just a little bit of money. You're not gonna break it, and it's gonna do what you want it to. Thank you guys so much for watching Bush Radical. My name's Dave Whipple. And be radical, eh? See you soon.